Well, you see these folks behind me every week, supporting the crew members on the space station as they perform science experiments. Well, the person who leads that team is called a payload operations director, and I'm pleased to be joined by one of the first of five people who was asked by NASA to be a payload operations director. That was way back in Expedition 2, Pat Patterson. Now we're on Expedition 47. Tell us about the things that, that we've accomplished in that time. What goes through your mind? Well, first and foremost is the amount of science that we've accomplished and the amazing people both here and across the world that have helped us enable that science. And, you know, you didn't start out with this beautiful room we have behind us here either. Tell us about, you know, I mean, you've had you've added crew members, you, you've had to add technology too. Technology has changed a lot, I'm sure. Technology has changed in the last 15 years. Our original room was uh, 90 degrees oriented differently. We did not have our nice big video wall. Our computers were not state of the art. Um, our communications, we were only dealing with Houston mostly at the beginning. Now we interact with the European Space Agency the Japanese Space Agency, JAXA, and all of our payload developers across the globe. So uh, communication has improved a lot as well. And the crew members have changed over that time too. And, and you ha like you mentioned, the, the international partners. Tell us how that has evolved through the years, working with the crew members and helping them get that important science. Um, well, we surged between, uh, we've had as few as two crew members up to as many as nine when we had a shuttle docked with us. So that, that affects a lot with what you can do and how you do it. And you guys plan, coordinate, and, and do it all, right? Really? Right. We're responsible for the NASA science on board, and our job is to make sure that the crew has everything they need to execute that science for the scientist on the ground. So I won't ask you your favorite crew member, but I will ask you about some of your favorite experiments. Yeah, we'll put you on the spot. Uh, do you have any over the, I mean, that's really been a long time. Let's think, I mean, that's since 2001. Yeah. A lot of experiments. How many have we gotten to? I mean, it's really increased. We have. We're up to over 300 payloads or experiments. Um, asking somebody their favorite is kind of like asking somebody to name a favorite child or a pet. They're all <laughs> unique and they all have soft spots in our hearts. But um, one of them I wanted to tell you about today was called Spiders in Space. And we flew uh, two uh, golden orb spiders that lived on board space station for approximately three months. And the goal there was golden orb spiders spin a web every day. So we wanted to see how they would adapt. And come to find out, um, they adapted just fine. And comparing that to golden orbs that flew on a shorter duration shuttle mission, the shuttle spiders spun continuously, whereas the station spiders followed a timetable. They um, got up in the morning, spun their web, hunted their food, and then ate their web and started all over the next day. So it's just amazing how not only humans, but creatures can adapt as well. And that was very popular. The video was very popular on YouTube. I it know. was, it was. And you also, I, I see you're leaning towards the educational side of payloads. Tell us about the other one that you really like. The other one is called SPHERES, which is an acronym, like everything at NASA is an acronym. <laughs> SPHERES stands for uh, Synchronize, Position, Hold, Engage, Reorient, Experiment Satellites. Uh, that's why it's an acronym. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's very right. And it's a set of three soccer ball sized satellites that um, can be uh, computer controlled from software that's uploaded from the ground. And you know, the, the educational part of Spheres is that every six months MIT holds a competition and they design a scenario and one of the scenarios last year was they provided a map of asteroids and solar flares. And then the students had to code the software to get close to get imagery but not too close to the solar flare. <laughs> So the finalists actually go to MIT, they sit in a big conference room, they have on their big screen in their conference room um, the satellites operating with the crew there and the crew's there scoring it and at the end there's one team that wins. So it's, it's really a neat thing for us to get to see that interaction and excitement that's generated. And, and you're kind of the behind the scenes in that, you, you get we them ready are. for that. We are. But the other cool thing about Spheres is it's not just an educational payload, it's also a tech demo payload. Over the years, it's been on board since increment 13 and over the years we've flown different batteries to help with the power system, we've flown a smartphone to help with the command and data handling system, we've flown goggles to help with the imagery system. Um, one great inventive mind on the earth thought about they sent up hardware that connected two spheres with a chamber in the middle that could hold liquid and they would move the spheres and see how the liquid slosh. So we were studying the slosh effect and also the every action has an equal and opposite reaction effect. That, that is so interesting. And I know a lot of times when, when people ask you about the Payload Operations Integration Center, you always talk about the people. What has I, that meant to you over the years? It's, it's just, 
an experience that is very hard to describe. The people, it's not just the people in Huntsville or just the people in Houston, it's the people in the other control centers in, in Moscow, in Scuba, Japan, in Oberpfaffenhof in Germany, and all of the payload developers across the world. We're all working towards um, expanding our knowledge base and going for the discovery and learning new things that will help all of us ex it go beyond low Earth orbit. And I know we're grateful that you've been there from the start. And one day I'm going to learn how to say Oberfuss and Huffington. Yeah. <laughs> Takes a lot of practice. Doesn't roll off the tongue too easily. Let's take a live look into the Payload Operations Integration Center. Look at those folks busy at work today. Thank you very much, Pat. And if you'd like to ask Pat anything or maybe any of these people, maybe something I didn't ask, um, you'll have that opportunity this Thursday, March the 10th from 2 to 3 Central Time during our Reddit Ask Me Anything. You ready for that, Pat? I'm ready. I will be joined by other team members here to answer your questions about supporting science on the station. You can follow along the res with the responses to the questions or just pose one yourself if you'd like to at the official Reddit AMA website. That's www.reddit.com slash r slash L-A-M-A.